Premium quality football shirts at an extremely affordable price. Sound good? If so, check out the sponsor of today's video, jerseyfifa.com. You can see that I've sent these some shirts and they really are top quality. So make sure to click the link in the description to go find a shirt for yourself or perhaps as a gift for someone else. And you can now use code jerseyfifa at checkout for 10% off your order. That's code jerseyfifa at checkout for 10% off your order. I really do recommend their products, so go take a look. Now let's get into the analysis. So over the past month or so, Carlo Ancelotti has come under some criticism for his approach to certain matches and his tactics in general. But with Madrid currently 9 points clear at the top of La Liga, is it really deserved? To be honest, it is a bit of a hard one to gauge, because consistency in performance is something that is lacking. And we just have to take the PSG tie for example, where fortunately for them, 30 minutes of world class play was enough to get through. Arguably the fairest way to judge any side is on their league form as opposed to success in cups simply because it requires greater consistency for a team to do well in their league, and as I said, they currently sit 9 points clear. But whilst on the surface this does look like a team that is doing well, I can't help but feel as though Madrid have become slightly reliant on a certain duo, and without them I do think Ancelotti's tactics are limited, so let's take a look at the setup. In goal, Real Madrid have Thibaut Courtois, who for me has probably been the best goalkeeper in Europe this season, and that's largely down to his shot stopping to keep Real Madrid in games when they aren't necessarily at their best. Despite his shot stopping, Courtois isn't exactly the greatest with the ball at his feet, and to be honest, the team as a whole do struggle when they face an intense press, just like we saw during the first leg against PSG. Despite this, Madrid do still have plenty of players with real elite technical ability on the ball, and when we see quick interchanges at the back, it can allow Madrid to get through this press, especially when Alaba starts. When this happens, the opposition are forced to drop slightly deeper from where Courtois often finds himself playing between the defenders who are now given more time on the ball to take a touch and play the ball forward. From here, Madrid then tend to dominate the ball, especially against the so-called lower sides, where they look to use two main shapes to try and build possession, with one being the 2-4 shape with Cruz and Casemiro deeper. The other shape is more of a 2-3 shape, with Cruz moving over to the left-hand side, playing in line with Casemiro and Carvajal, which therefore allows Mendy to take up a higher starting position on the left. This sort of left-sided role is something that we've seen from Cruz in the past, although to be honest his form has struggled a little bit over the past month or so, but that has coincided with Madrid's drop in quality in recent times. Because, earlier on in the season, he probably could have made a claim to be the most informed midfielder in the world, and his passing and his ability on the ball is still clearly at the absolute highest level, and he is still very important to this side. For this very reason, Ancelotti probably deserves a bit of credit and some criticism. In the smaller games, he's got the best out of Cruz and utilised his passing well, but Ancelotti's approach in bigger games just doesn't suit his style, but we'll come back to that. So, in these games when Madrid are building in a 2-3 shape and dominating possession of the ball, the passing range of Cruz is able to bring Asensio into the game on the right hand side, from where he then looks to cut inside. Asensio is another player whose form has varied, he always seemed to play well when coming from the bench, this then earns him a start, but then in these games that he starts, his impact on the match seems really limited. Despite this, Asenjo is still important because his movement in field creates room out wide down the right hand side, which then allows Carvajal to make runs forward from right back to provide the whip for the attack. Another player that often gets involved down this right hand side is Luka Modric, and he's the one that brings the real quality, as he regularly looks to pick the ball up before then dribbling forward through the thirds. Modric in fact ranks in the 91st percentile for progressive carries, but despite his best efforts, Carvajal and Asensio simply aren't able to match his ability level, and at times it leaves his right hand side rather predictable. As a result of this, most of Madrid's phases in possession are based on the left hand side, with Cruz holding slightly deeper, which as a result allows Mendy to push forward from left back, either overlapping or underlapping. These underlapping runs from Mendy in particular allow the ball to be worked to Vinicius Jr in space, and then from here he is able to get the ball and really drive at the opposition defenders on this side of the pitch. Just a year ago Vinicius was facing a lot of criticism, and whilst there was never any doubt over his dribbling ability, there have always been question marks over his end product, but this season Vinicius has really developed and outgrown this. 
If we take a look at his FB ref report, we can instantly see just how good his numbers have been over the past 365 days. He's in the 98th percentile for touches in the opposition's penalty area, as well as progressive carries, whilst also ranking in the 90th percentile or higher for progressive passes received, dribbles completed, non-penalty goals and shot-creating actions. And it's clear that his form so far this season is really not something that should be underappreciated. He has been truly world-class and on, that, on the edge of that elite bracket. Probably the most exciting thing for Real Madrid fans is that the Brazilian is still just 21 years old, and personally I think he has a few areas to develop, and if he is able to do that then he can be up there with the very best in world football. Of course none of this would have been possible if it wasn't for the brilliant work of Karim Benzema, and for the first time in his career he is finally getting the credit that he deserves, and it's about time the world realises how good he really is. As I said, a lot of Benzema's success has come from his link-up with Vinicius, which has regularly seen Benzema dropping to the left-hand side of the attack to get the ball, before then looking to move the ball inside to either shoot or create. For me, and I'm sure most people will agree, this duo of Benzema and Vinicius is the best in world football right now, and the number of goal contributions that they've provided for Madrid this season is just simply ridiculous. Again, it is the experience and the selfless nature of Benzema that has allowed this to happen, and genuinely, I don't think there is a striker in world football that could come into the team and perform this role as well as what Benzema does. To back this up, let's take a look at his FB ref report, which compares him to every striker in Europe's top 5 leagues over the past 365 days. And similar to Vinicius, we can see that his numbers are up there with the very best in the world. And one thing that really stands out is that Benzema is in the 90th percentile or higher for 11 different stats. And that is genuinely not something that many players in the world of football can claim. You can disagree, but in my personal opinion, I think he is the most well-rounded striker currently that we have in world football. You might be tired of me talking about these two, but that's just unlucky because they are incredible and deserve to be spoken about and they have combined for 49 goals between them in all competitions so far this season, and there's no reason they can't hit 60. The issue for Madrid is that when they can't get the ball to these two, Madrid's game plan really does lack anything, and that's exactly what we saw in the first leg against PSG, and these struggles have been a reasonably regular occurrence. This may not be an issue in La Liga, where there are defences that lack quality, so Madrid have enough stardust to beat them, but in the biggest games in the Champions League, I think this becomes much more of an issue for Madrid. I mean, we just have to take the Barcelona game of last week for example, where Ancelotti got his tactics all wrong and from a tactical point of view it was nowhere near good enough and it was actually really naive. For me, Ancelotti has made mistakes elsewhere as well by not giving certain players enough game time and these young stars at the club like Camavinga really do deserve a lot more time than what they're getting because they're ready. Another perfect example would be Valverde, a player who gets brought into the team for the occasional game, and when he plays he always has a massive impact on how the team plays, but for some reason Ancelotti just doesn't like to play him for some reason. Ancelotti seems to have become very stuck in his ways of playing the same midfield three over and over again. Don't get me wrong, I completely understand why, because they are all incredible, but they are humans, and physically they can't play every game. As I said earlier, one of the reasons that this midfield has struggled is because they are asked to see a lot less of the ball against the big sides, when Madrid are happy to sacrifice possession to make sure that they get men behind the ball. Whilst it doesn't necessarily suit the midfield three, I do think that Ancelotti deserves some credit for the discipline that is developed in this side, and he's managed to get the whole team pulling in the same direction from a defensive point of view. Even players like Vinicius are regularly asked to get back and defend, and to be fair he seems more than happy to do this work for his team, and this certainly isn't something that can be said for the wingers at every big club in Europe. This often defensive approach has also created some excellent attacking opportunities for Madrid, as they are able to win the ball back in these deep areas before then quickly springing forward in these dangerous transitions. Once again, the key to this is Benzema and his willingness to do the selfless work in the middle of the park, which therefore allows someone like Vinicius to use his explosive pace to get in behind the defence on the break. Again, you could argue that this leaves Real Madrid slightly dependent on individual quality, but as I said, it's only possible if the rest of the team are pulling in the right direction, and this is something that Ancelotti has achieved this year. It's this base which allows Benzema and Vinicius to cause complete destruction on the counter-attack, even if at times they are just a little bit dependent on these two, but ultimately it has worked for most of the season so far. A few weeks ago this saw Madrid secure their first trophy of the season, and I actually done an analysis of that game if you wish to go find it on the channel after this video, it would be greatly appreciated if you went and showed that video some love. 
I've also covered several of their La Liga games as well, where, as I keep saying, they are 9 points clear at the top of the table. So it's hard to criticise Ancelotti too much when they've won the cup and are top of the league in Spain. Assuming Madrid don't collapse, they should go on to win the league, and the real test of how good this side is against the best teams will be in the Champions League, where they of course have Chelsea, which is going to be a massive, massive game. Sadly, I will miss the first leg of that game, but I will cover the second leg on the channel, as well as Madrid's run towards the title, and there is absolutely no reason that Ancelotti can't finish the season on a high with two or more trophies. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.